Hello everyone and welcome back to the SVLINX channel. Today we're finally going to go over the hybrid propulsion system that we chose to put on SVLINX. And what we picked was a combination propulsion system that both a hybrid, diesel, and electric. And we're going to show you all about that. So get ready to nerd out. So there were four main systems that we looked at while planning for SV Links. And this all happened way before we even found the solitaire line of cats from Shoning. The four systems we looked at were number one, diesel engines, 250 horsepower engines, one in each hull. Number two, hybrid electric, which is two electric motors plus at least one generator, probably two. Number three, parallel hybrid which is two 50 horsepower diesel engines, each with a 10 kilowatt electric motor attached in parallel. Number four, a parallel hybrid combo, which is one 80 horsepower diesel engine, which has a 25 kilowatt electric motor attached, plus another standalone 25 kilowatt motor in the other hull. Okay, to cut to the chase, we decided on the parallel hybrid combo system for these reasons. And number one on that list, weight savings. Number two, greater motoring range. Number three, the recommended horsepower for our boat. Number four, no rudder drag when motoring with a single diesel. Number five, no separate generator needed. Number six, lower maintenance costs. Number seven, a lower overall cost due to fuel savings. Number eight, far more comfort for our crew. The parallel hybrid combo system is tops in each of those categories. And before we get to the nitty gritty of why it won all of those, let's take a look at the actual propulsion system that we're going to use on SV Lynx. Here it is. In the port hull, we have an 80 horsepower N4.80 Nanny diesel engine, which is coupled with a combi 25 kilowatt water cooled electric motor put in parallel. That means that they are both attached to the same drive shaft, but either system may turn the shaft independently of the other. We went with a nanny diesel for a lot of reasons. We like that it's not computer controlled, which means it's more likely to withstand a lightning strike and still function. We also like that we may carry and replace all the spare parts for working on this engine. Some new modern common rail engines often have computer components that only a dealer is allowed to carry, so you can't have a spare. Companies like Yanmar also require that you have the engine serviced by a certified professional who has special test gear. And if you don't, it voids your warranty. We need to be able to service our own engine in remote locations. The Nanny is based off of a Kubata diesel engine, which has parts available worldwide. Any marinized parts made by Nanny can be purchased ahead of time and put as spares on board. Since we save about $12,000 on the initial price, that means we can buy a lot of spare parts up front. There are some advantages listed for common rail engines. They're supposed to be quieter and meet emission standards. However, in modern Kubata engines, like this N4.80 that we purchased, they have developed ETBCS direct fuel injection, which results in considerable reduction of particle emissions. So these engines also comply with the emission regulations. This engine is also turbocharged and develops high torque at low RPM for increased fuel efficiency. With these improvements in emissions and fuel efficiency, plus being able to be serviced by us while relying on less electronics, all in all, we feel that this is the best diesel for our needs on SV Lynx. So now let's talk about the starboard side of the boat where we don't have a diesel engine instead we have a single 25 kilowatt water-cooled electric motor only with a control box to keep uh, everything working between both electric motors. And as you can see, here it is. And the green part here is obviously the water-cooled motor and that's the large control box that sits right behind it. The batteries for this system will also be in the same area to help balance out the boat from the diesel weight on the other side. So let's take a look at this and talk a little bit more about this electric motor. 
We chose to go with combi as the hybrid modus for our boat. So why did we choose combi? Well, it begins with quality. Combi uses an electric motor designed to be put into a boat. Being water-cooled, it keeps the size smaller and will keep the heat down as well. All right, now let's talk about the bracket system that holds this electric motor to the diesel. As you can see, it's very robust, very well made, and that's going to hold that electric motor, which is attached with a pulley down to the drive shaft over there, securely to the boat. And it's one of the things we really love about the Combi system is how the quality is obvious when you look at this kind of construction for it. And the nice part is they make these different brackets for many different diesels. But for us, since they hadn't made one for the Nanny 4.80 yet, they're accustomed to making a brand new bracket just for SV Lynx, since they hadn't made one for the Nanny N4.80 up until now. Another thing we liked, all of their components are within the motor housing, so we only need to connect the power cables and water lines. It's a very integrated system and comes with motor mounts for the standalone motor. Let's go back to the parallel motor. This also acts as a generator, and both electric motors can supply power as hydro generators. This was critical to our needs for SV Lynx. Combi also offered the option of a dual throttle controls, one to port and a second to starboard. This is great for docking a catamaran. That way you have good visibility along the dock side of the boat. When we were looking into which hybrid parallel engines and motors to purchase, we had already decided that Combi's system was the best option out there for our propulsion system on SV Lynx before contacting the company. We decided that their combination of quality, features, and price made Combi the best choice for SV Lynx. On learning about our project, Combi ePropulsion offered to sponsor us. Sweet! Don't tell them, but we would have purchased their hybrid system at the regular price since it was still the best deal out there, especially when you consider the quality and perfect fit for our needs on SV Lynx. Since then, we found them to be a great company to work with, which is another big benefit, and that wasn't always true of the companies we contacted. Before finding Combi, we spoke with a representative of one of their competitors in the UK. They told us they don't have time to supply motors for an individual boat since they have deals in place with other manufacturers. So that's taking up all their inventory and that they didn't have time for us. They will go unnamed since we don't really want to badmouth another company or promote their brand. But it wasn't very nice being told we're unimportant to them. Even if they had been willing to sell us their system, it was far more expensive, up around $60,000, and we didn't like the standalone hybrid motor they offered. Meanwhile, the people at Combi have been friendly and helpful every step of the way. We did have to source the diesel engine separately with Combi, but the price you would pay for the Nanny plus the entire Combi hybrid system comes out to around $48,000. Best yet, the combi system is much nicer while being about $12,000 less. Better yet, the other company only offered 20 kilowatt electric motors, where combi offers two 25 water-cooled electric motors. With strong brackets that attach to the engine motor mounts on the parallel side, and dual throttle controls, all the wiring harnesses, and these two excellent displays. Okay, and that's why we chose this kind of system for our boat. So, now that you know which system and brands we chose and why, here are the benefits of the parallel hybrid combo system. First thing is, is that we are a diesel boat still. We have that 80 horsepower nanny on board, and when it's advantageous for us to be a diesel boat, we can use that to power the boat. And so, here are the three times that we might be using the diesel. Number one, when we want to use it as a generator. Number two, when we're motoring for very long periods of time, like if we were becalmed for a week. Number three, we're fighting a major current or any time we need a lot of horsepower. However, in all other situations, which are most of the time, we can use the electric motors. This parallel hybrid combo can run purely electric, turning each prop with a 25 kilowatt motor. For normal situations while cruising, this gives us a total of 67 horsepower, though we'll use much less for long periods of propulsion. That means we can motor with the blissful quiet of an electric propulsion system 
which produces no smelly fumes and doesn't burn a drop of diesel fuel. All right, well, let's go into detail on each of the items that we went over earlier, and we'll talk about why they're so important and why this combo system is tops. And number one on that list, weight savings. Reducing weight on a performance catamaran is critical. So this is one of the biggest advantages to the parallel hybrid combo system. Proponents of a diesel propulsion system will tell you that pound for pound, diesel fuel is far more energy dense than batteries, and that saves weight. In fact, a gallon of diesel fuel is equivalent to about 38 kilowatt hours, or 27 times more energy stored than in the equivalent weight in lithium batteries. That's all true. So based on that, how could a hybrid propulsion system save weight? All right, let's start with some math. Let's add up the weight of the diesel propulsion system. Sounds good. Schoening recommended two 50 horsepower diesel engines. With gearboxes attached, they weigh around 550 pounds each. So two of them is 1,100 pounds. Schoening designed the Solitaire 1490 to carry 158 gallons of diesel fuel to supply these two engines. A gallon diesel weighs seven pounds, so that means 1,106 pounds of diesel fuel. You'll also need a nine kilowatt generator, which weighs at least 365 pounds. All total, that comes to 2,571 pounds. Now, let's compare the parallel hybrid combo system we're putting on SV Lynx. We start with a Nanny 80 horsepower diesel. With the gearbox, it weighs 606 pounds. Because we're a hybrid propulsion system and can run off electric for most passages, we don't need as much diesel fuel on board. We calculated 70 gallons are necessary, but we're adding 100 gallons to add a safety margin. Therefore, that 100 gallons of diesel fuel weighs 700 pounds. Now, we need triple the battery bank size over the typical house bank size on a diesel boat. So that adds another 22 kilowatts of batteries weighing an additional 440 pounds. We also have the two hybrid motors, which weigh a total of 300 pounds. Both boats will have solar, but let's add 200 extra pounds of solar panels due to this being a hybrid boat. All total, that comes to 2,248 pounds, which is about 323 pounds lighter than the diesel boat. Sweet. So as you can see, we save a considerable amount of weight going with the combo propulsion system. Next up on our list, number two, greater range. With all the increased energy of diesel fuel over batteries, certainly you would think that the diesel boat has greater range, but not so fast. Remember that we plan to start each of our passages with full batteries, which gives us three hours of motoring at five knots. Sure, that's only 15 miles, but as you will see, that does matter. Then, during a typical sunny day, we recharge our batteries from our five kilowatts of solar panels. Subtracting some house uses, we still get to motor for an additional 10 miles off of our electric motors. All total, that's five hours a day or 25 nautical miles of electric propulsion. If we're making a single day passage, we won't need to turn on the diesel engine at all. So we won't use a single drop of diesel on those short passages. But what about long range passages? Well, remember, we aren't an electric boat. We're a parallel hybrid combo, which means we can motor off our diesel engine when that is advantageous. Now, we did reduce our fuel capacity to 100 gallons, so we only have two thirds of the range of the diesel boat while burning diesel fuel. But the first day we start out with 15 nautical miles from our full batteries. Each day thereafter on that long passage, we get to motor on electric for 10 miles from our solar recharge. But that's not the whole story. We also regain power from hydro regeneration. While crossing oceans, we will most often be sailing the trade winds as we make our way around the world. That means we get a lot of consistent wind so on those passages, we'll be sailing for a high percentage of the time. On an 18-day ocean crossing, if you figure three days of no wind while crossing the doldrums, that means you sail 15 days of that passage. With our 50-foot performance catamaran, each of those days that we sail in 50 knots or more wind, we regenerate about 48 kilowatts of power. That drives our boat up to another four hours on electric propulsion, which adds an additional 20 miles each day whenever the wind drops for short periods. Therefore, between solar and regen, we get 30 miles a day from electric propulsion. 
Over those 15 windy days, that's 450 miles of motoring without burning diesel. Now, during the three days we're in the doldrums, we can't regenerate from wind, but we still get solar for 10 miles a day for a total of 30 miles. Adding that to the other 15 days with wind and sun, we have a total electric range of 495 miles without burning any diesel fuel. If our diesel is burning one gallon an hour, a diesel boat gets around 158 hours of motoring from their 158 gallons of fuel. At five knots of speed, that's 790 nautical miles. At the same burn rate, with our 100 gallons of fuel, we only get 500 miles on our diesel, but we get to motor on electric for an additional 495 miles, which gives us a total range of 995 nautical miles versus the 790 miles of the diesel boat. But what happens, for example, if we get becalmed for seven days? If we were a diesel boat, we would motor at five knots, but we would run out of fuel while still becalmed for about 10 hours, and we would be out of diesel fuel for the rest of the voyage. With our parallel hybrid combo boat, if we use the diesel, we would also run out, and even sooner, by a couple of days. But we still have our electric propulsion system and solar panels. At that point, we reduce our speed to 2.5 knots, which is half the normal cruising speed. Yet that means we aren't sitting still. We're still moving toward our destination. By cutting our speed in half, we extend our three hours of motoring to 24 hours per day. This is based off the cubed rule of electric propulsion, which means that at half the speed, you motor for eight times longer. Therefore, as long as the sun is shining each day, we store enough power in the batteries to run our parallel hybrid combo boat 24 hours a day at 2.5 knots. We're never out of propulsive power, where the diesel boat, once they run out of fuel, is dead in the water. Sure, 2.5 knots is pretty slow, but we still be making 60 miles a day, and we're not becalmed in the heat, so we get some apparent air movement. As you can now see, the range of the parallel hybrid combo is greater than the diesel boat, even though we carry one third less diesel on board. Simply put, the reason for the greater range is that even though the same weight in battery stores less power than diesel fuel, we can keep refilling those batteries from solar and wind, while the diesel boat has a fixed amount of fuel on board and there aren't any fuel stations in the middle of an ocean. Advantage, greater range in the parallel hybrid combo propulsion system. Right, and number three on our list is the fact that it has enough horsepower to meet the recommended mount that Shoning Design said for our 1520. Now it's true the diesel equipped version of this boat would still have enough horsepower with their 250 horsepower engines. However, if we were a pure electric hybrid boat, then we would have a problem. Because if you have two 20 kilowatt electric motors which are fed by generators or batteries, either way your total horsepower is still only 54 horsepower. That's only half of what the designer suggested and, in our opinion, is inadequate for emergency situations. With our parallel hybrid combo system, when we need the recommended full horsepower for this boat, we have an 80 horsepower diesel engine which can also turn the attached parallel 25 kilowatt motor. That turns it into a generator as well as an engine and it sends up to around 12 kilowatts to the electric motor in the starboard hull. That means at our cruising speed, that standalone electric motor doesn't have to run off batteries when we're using the diesel engine. And in an emergency, it adds up to 33.5 horsepower to the propulsion of the 80 horsepower diesel engine, though that will require some additional power from the batteries. Still, that means we have more than the full recommended 100 horsepower when needed to deal with an emergency. In fact, we have up to 110 horsepower. Number four is reduced rudder drag from motoring off one diesel engine. Now, it's true that most sailors just use one of their two diesels when they're just at cruising speed. And that causes a little bit of a problem because that makes the boat want to turn. And so they have to offset that by turning the rudder a little bit. Now, it's only two to three degrees, which isn't that much, but it does add a little bit of drag. With our system, since the parallel diesel can send power across to the other electric motor, both props can be turning even though one diesel is running. So we don't have to offset the rudder to compensate for turn. Number five, we don't need a separate generator. Although it's true that some sailors will only use an alternator instead of a diesel generator, 
The problem with that is that diesel engines don't like to be idled without being under a load. It can actually damage the engine. But with our 25 kilowatt electric motor attached, that puts it under enough of a load that we can use it as a generator without damaging the diesel. And that gives us a 12 kilowatt generator without the extra weight of a separate generator or the maintenance costs of another diesel engine on board. Number six, lower maintenance costs. And the reason for that is that we only have one diesel on board where a diesel boat, if it has a generator, has three diesels on board. And that's a lot more maintenance. Not only that, but because we're a hybrid boat and we're going to be running off those electric motors 75% of the time or so, that means that there's just a lot less hours put on our diesel and therefore the maintenance cycles are much further apart. So lower maintenance costs. Number seven, lower overall costs due to fuel savings. And there are a lot of people out there who believe that it isn't worth the cost to put a hybrid system into a performance catamaran. In fact, one of our users, Kirk B, wrote to me about that and he asked me to explain why we think it's good. And I'm going to go over all of those reasons right now for Kirk and, of course, for everyone else. But I don't want to say that we're picking on Kirk. This is just answering his question. In fact, many people on the forums have asked me the same question, and so I could be answering them just as well. But Kirk asked for an explanation, so here he goes. Kirk B. wrote, Looking forward to you sharing the math for adding the complexity and cost of a hybrid propulsion system on a performance sailing catamaran that will only use 2,000 worth of diesel fuel in a year if you're motoring a ton. There is no financial payback for this option I've found other than it being cool. All the 50-foot performance cat owners I've spoken to have given me real-life numbers that they spend more like $1,500 a year on fuel. Makes it tough to make a hybrid make sense, although we really wanted it to on our boat. So let's jump in and look at the initial cost of purchase and the fuel savings over time to get an overall cost comparison of our parallel hybrid combo propulsion system versus a diesel engine equipped boat. The first thing we need to nail down is how much fuel a performance cat will use per year. For example, Kirk reported that some performance cat owners claim that they use about $1,500 a year. We can accept those numbers for certain cat owners. However, the amount of nautical miles they're sailing each year does matter. Then, we must also consider the future price of diesel fuel since it historically increases over the years. I looked up some numbers for the average price increase in the US for diesel fuel, and it came out to be 5.8% per year. I'll use that as our example. If diesel fuel runs $4 a gallon today, in 10 years, it will cost $6.60 a gallon, and by the end of our 14-year voyage, it will be up to $8.30 a gallon. That makes the average cost for a gallon of diesel fuel over the 14 years $6.15 a gallon. On our voyage, we're planning to sail an average of 9,700 nautical miles a year for 14 years. The rule of thumb in sailing is that you motor 50% of the time. However, we agree that with a good performance catamaran, that old rule of thumb may be off since we can sail in lighter winds. So, for argument's sake, let's say that we're motoring 40% of the time and sailing the other 60%. So, if someone's performance catamaran was averaging 4,500 miles a year, motoring 40% of the time while doing five knots while motoring, they would motor for 360 hours each year. At one gallon an hour burn rate, that's 360 gallons a year. Multiply that by the current price of $4 a gallon and you get $1,440, which is right about what those performance catamaran owners told Kirk that they're currently spending on diesel fuel. But remember, due to the increase in fuel price, that cost will rise. So averaging that over the 14 years, the price comes out to 2,214 a year. Still, not far off of what Kirk noted. That's fine. So figuring in our 14 year double circumnavigation while putting 9,700 miles under our hulls each year, it means we will use an average of 5,535 worth of diesel fuel a year at that $6.15 a gallon average. That's more than double an average cruiser expenditure noted by Kirk. That gives us a range to work off of as we compare diesel versus hybrid propulsion. 2,214 a year for a typical performance catamaran over those years, 5,535 for our long double circumnavigation. We'll compare both numbers against the combo hybrid system usage. Using our 14 year voyage as our base, that means the average boat would burn about $31,000 worth of diesel fuel over that time, while 
we will probably burn more like $77,490 over that same number of years. Now, let's compare the price of our parallel hybrid system versus purchasing two 50 horsepower diesel engines and a generator. Though prices vary, a decent price for a 50 horsepower diesel for shaft drive is $12,000. Therefore, two would cost $24,000. Then, add in another $10,000 for that 9 kilowatt generator. That's $34,000 total. Now add an average size lithium house battery bank for about $3,000. So all total, that's $37,000. Now for the parallel hybrid system. The 80 horsepower diesel we're adding to our parallel system runs about $18,000. The combi hybrid system we're adding costs $25,000. The house lithium batteries for the parallel hybrid has to be triple the size of the normal house bank. So that costs $10,000 since we need more than just house needs. All total, that's $53,000. So the diesel boat ran $37,000 to set up with the diesel engines and house batteries, while the parallel hybrid boat cost a lot more at $53,000, making it $16,000 of additional upfront cost. Now let's compare the cost to buy and use both systems over time. On the diesel boat, if we add in the fuel cost of that average performance cat, the price to purchase is $37,000, and the amount of fuel burned over 14 years figuring in the diesel fuel increases, is $31,000. So, your total cost to purchase and use this system over 14 years is $68,000. Note, this does not include maintenance savings, which are significant as you will only be servicing one diesel versus three on the diesel boat, and will be running the diesel about one quarter of the hours. But still, we'll ignore that for now. Now let's compare the cost of the parallel hybrid system over the same period. The initial cost is high, at $53,000. However, being a hybrid boat, we only use about 28% of the diesel fuel, so that comes out to about $8,600. That means our total cost is about $62,000. So if we compare the two systems over that length of time, we save $6,000 by purchasing the parallel hybrid combo system over the diesel on a typical performance boat using Kirk's numbers. If we compare our length of voyage, the numbers will come out even more in our favor. The diesel boat would have a total cost of $114,500, while the parallel hybrid would cost $82,300. So in our case, we save $32,200 over the long run on a double circumnavigation. But you save money either way. So basically, even using the numbers that Kurt B proposed for diesel fuel usage, the parallel hybrid is still more economical, assuming you're doing a lot of sailing, which we are. If you sit in marinas and only sail occasionally, doing far less than 4,500 nautical miles a year, then the diesel boat may be more cost effective. However, if you're sailing often, especially doing something like going around the world, then all the advantages, including cost, go to the parallel hybrid combo boat. And yes, it's also cool. All right, number eight on our list and the final item is more crew comfort. Over the 135,800 miles that we'll be traveling as we do our double circumnavigation, 72% of the time that we're motoring, we won't have to smell diesel, listen to that engine going, and we'll have less time hauling out for costly maintenance. Then there is the procuring of diesel fuel. This is a big one for us. I can show you videos of boats circumnavigating where they must take jerry cans in their dinghy to shore, load them into a taxi, pay to drive to the fuel station to fill their cans, return by taxi to shore, dinghy the jerry cans to the boat, load them on the cat, pour them into the tanks, and then repeat all that four to eight times, depending on how many jerry cans they have and their dinghy can handle, as well as how much fuel they need at that given moment. With our vastly reduced reliance on diesel fuel, we can likely skip those places where procuring diesel is a real pita, since we only need to fuel 75% of the time compared to a diesel-only boat. On even those folks using $1,500 a year with their performance cat, that's still 3,628 gallons less that we don't have to find and sometimes transport to the boat. That's a whole lot of nasty work and cost that we can avoid for our crew. And as a side benefit, our crew also gets the use of a large battery bank, which means things like running the AC all night without having to listen to a generator and other advantages of more power stored on board. So, as you can see, 
there are a whole lot of advantages to our combo system over just diesel engines. But what about the other two propulsion systems we talked about earlier? The electric hybrid or the parallel hybrid? We already mentioned the biggest problem with the hybrid boat, lack of horsepower. Yeah, and that's a big deal. At only about half the horsepower that the boat is required to have, that just doesn't do the trick. If you add more electric motors, like four Ocean Bolt 20 kilowatt servoprops, the price goes through the roof topping out way over $100,000. Then, you need the additional battery and generator power to drive four motors, which adds a ton of weight to the boat. So, your options are to do that or go underpowered. As for the parallel hybrid, which is two diesels plus two 10 kilowatt motors, the issue there is added weight, cost, and maintenance. Plus, you must run two diesels when you need to use them as generators, or you're only getting about five kilowatts of charge, and that uses more fuel. Secondly, those 10 kilowatt motors only hydro generate at half the power of what we're gonna have. The only advantage of that system is the redundancy of a second diesel engine. That would be nice, but for us, it isn't worth the added weight, cost, and less propulsive power on electric, and less hydro generation. After all, our primary propulsion systems are our sails, since we're a sailboat. Our second propulsion system is our electric motors, and our third is the diesel. So we have redundancy of propulsion systems, which is fine in our book. So that's why we went with a parallel hybrid combination diesel engine electric motor propulsion system. By the way, there's far more detailed fuel usage comparisons on our website in the crew patron area where we compare many different types and lengths of passages, calculating fuel usage on all four types of propulsion systems we mentioned in this video. So if you want to see all those numbers and comparisons, consider becoming part of our patron crew. It's as little as $2 a month. And don't forget, if you're interested in possibly building a Solitaire 1520 or any other Schoenig model, drop me an email from our website and I'll get you in contact with the right folks at Schoenig Plus, I'll answer any questions you may have about the entire process. I should also disclose that Schoening has recently offered us a commission on the sale of their kits since we helped collaborate on the design of the Solitaire 1520. So that would help us out if you're interested in buying one of their kits. Also, we have several of our patron crew who are now planning to build a Solitaire 1520. So consider joining the loyal patron crew level so that you have access to the chat forums where these fellow builders of the 1520 kit are busy discussing their future cat builds. All right, well, that brings us to the end of this video, and we'd like to thank our patrons. All right, well, thank you to everyone who watched our video this week. We really appreciate your viewership. And also a special thanks to our patrons and uh, their very helpful donations to our cause. Without them, it would be very difficult for us to do this trip. And I would also uh, like to just say that our loyal patron group is spending a lot of time on our chat system now discussing the 1520, and several of them are getting ready to purchase that kit. So that's great. Don't forget to like and subscribe and click on the bell icon to be notified of our next video. And we will see you next week with that video. Bye. Bye, everybody.